Today is, or at least the Western world, the rich world, is, you might say, consumed by consumerism. The, the Quran refers to greed for more and more and condemns that absolutely. We today are constantly greedy and we are encouraged to be greedy, particularly by advertising, which tries to persuade us to buy many things that we don't need. We are even encouraged to be greedy by government authorities who want us to spend, 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 because that is good for the economy, or so it is supposed. But the world is flooded today in the West with all sorts of unnecessary goods which we are encouraged to buy. In fact, one reason that we have people, particularly in England, working appalling long hours with little chance to be with their family, little energy to be with their children, working, as they say, to keep ends, make ends meet, but working also because they need the money to buy a better television, a better this, a better that, to buy things that are not essential and are not really necessary. Now, Islam is very clear upon this point. Excess is condemned. And excessive greed is certainly and very powerfully condemned. But very often we don't even recognize that we have become greedy people. It's the, it's the way of things. It's the normal way of life to want better and better television, better and better, more powerful cars, and all the rest of it. We don't need these things. But in demanding them, in wanting them, in buying them. We are in fact contributing, albeit in a small way individually, to the depletion of the resources of this planet. And this is something that is easy to forget because we shall not see <coughs> immediate disaster as the result. It is our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren who are likely to suffer but the fact remains that we have used up the resources of the earth in the past 100, 150 years in a way that never, never happened in the past. And we continue to do so, and we continue in doing so to pollute the earth. One example, perhaps, may be the question of traveling, dashing to and fro across the world in aircraft. During the war, which of course my time but not yours, most of you, during the war there were notices posted all over the place saying, is your journey really necessary? I sometimes wish that such notices were still to be seen because most journeys are probably not necessary and yet <coughs> every aircraft that takes off anywhere in the world is adding a small, small little bit to the pollution that is so dangerous for this world. Now, this means <coughs> for us that we have to try to limit our needs. And that is particularly difficult <clears throat> because temptation lies on every side and encouragement to excess is on every side. It is a matter for the individual sometimes to sit back, particularly when they see a very tempting advertisement in the paper at morning something reduced price 
something they don't need, but all the same, you know, buying a bargain is saving money, or so we often feel. And it is a matter of thinking twice, of thinking three times, before rushing out to add to our possessions, which we cannot take with us when we die, and which, for the most part, are not really necessary to our well-being in this life. So that